Hey, what's up? It is Bailey from Basically B Squared. Yes, I have makeup on. Oh my God. Thank you for noticing. Um, so today is Tuesday and I got to thinking that I wanted some tea and I liked tea on Tuesday. So I'm going to start this new thing and it's called Here's the Tea, Tuesday's Tea. Here's the tea, Tuesday. Tea on Tuesday, Tuesday's tea. Three with the tea on Tuesday. I don't like any of those, but we'll figure it out after I record this. So today's tea is a yogi tea, and it is a positive energy sweet tangerine. Um, I really like uh, fruity herbal teas. I used to hate tea all the time, but now apparently I like tea. Uh, so this one says happiness is an accomplishment. Not sure that I agree with that. Also, I agree with that. Um, so lately I have been struggling with being really freaking rude to myself. I think a lot of people do that. And so I wanted to just give three things that I have like realized over the past week. Uh, number one, you aren't as bad as you say that you are. A lot of the times I'm pretty negative to myself. I can't even drink this tea because it's so hot right now. It's not like I, I intended on drinking it during this video, but it's too hot. Also, this is my favorite mug. It's Jesus. Who loves you, baby? Up with the sun. S-O-N. Got it. All right. You guys don't care. It's okay. See, there I go being negative again. You do care. You do care about my mug because it's awesome. Stop being so mean to yourself. I constantly tell myself, like, why do you even make these videos? Why do you feel like you have the authority to write a blog post? What makes you such an expert at life? And it's like, well, everyone's an expert at life because we all live very different lives. Brett. There's Brett. Hold on. Hello? Hello? Hi? Okay, that was just the most crazy phone call. Um, okay, back to number one. So we're constantly mean to ourselves. I gave you a couple of examples, but in between these skits, um, I thought of, like, I'm always like, why are you going to meal plan? It's not like you're going to follow through with it anyway. Why are you going to go buy new clothes? You're just going to be too big to fit in them, and they're not going to be flattering even if you do fit in them because, let's face it, you only look good in them. Why did you even attempt to buy shorts? You know you're not going to wear them because they make your butt look bigger than it already is. Um, that's jacked up. And I've really started to recognize the amount of crap that I say to myself. Even if it's just like I'm thinking it internally. Um, I've been listening to these podcasts and Netflix documentaries and reading these books. Okay, one book just one it's fine about how your thoughts create feelings and that sounds like pretty common sense when you first think of it but if I'm constantly thinking this way then it's constantly going to put me in a state of being discouraged or lacking in happiness so instead of saying these things the like it's almost like the chicken before the egg which I'm vegan so you know that was a bad joke. Um, the cart before the horse. No, still. Mm, I don't know a good one for that one. Like, these things are becoming a reality because you're thinking them. And because you're thinking them, they're becoming a reality. It's, it's like whatever you think you are, whatever you eat you are, whatever whoever you hang out with you are. All this is kind of true because once you're just like around something constantly all the time, you just begin to adapt with it. Like, Human nature is to adapt with what's around you. And if what's around you is just crap in your head all the time, then you need to take a head poop and get all that out and stop doing that. So um, be nicer to yourself and try and wake up like the first 10 seconds of the day. I literally forgot to do it this morning. And I was like, again, angry because I forgot to do my little 10 second positivity. Stupid. Don't be mad at yourself or all human. So first thing in the morning before you even get out of bed, especially before you reach for your phone, your freaking emails, everything else. I have found that like not reaching for my phone has been so much better for me in the mornings if I can like withstand it as 
long as I can. Unless it's the Bible, then I'm like, okay, that's fine. I can give it some Jesus in. Um, but I try to lay there like the first 10 seconds that I wake up and I'm like, okay, I'm thankful for this bed. It's really freaking comfortable, but I'm also thankful that I'm not going to hit snooze and I'm going to get out of the bed and I'm actually going to do what I said I was going to do because it's going to be positive for me. I'm really thankful for my husband. I'm really thankful for my kid. I'm thankful for my home. Uh, I'm thankful for me, even though, um, I saw somebody post this thing and it said, you can be a masterpiece and a work in progress at the same time. And I was like, well, thank God, because, you know, I thought I was just a piece of crap. All right, number two, your thoughts. I know I just said that, but just bear with me, okay? We're not good at this yet. That was being negative. I will be good at this. There we go. I'll be good at this. Okay, so my aunt gave me a book, and it's called The Secret, okay? And I started reading it, and I was like, I don't know if I like this. It's like kind of not Jesus-y. You know what I mean? Not Jesus-y. So I got really weirded out by it and I put it back on the bookshelf and I didn't read it for a while. But then my friend Summer, this was like a year ago and I haven't touched it since. So then like a year ago, I mean like a week ago, about a week ago. Also, y'all see how wrinkled this is? This is totally supposed to be like that. I did not just pull it um, out of the bottom of my closet because it was pink and I thought that would make me look feminine. Negative. It's weird. Uh, okay. My friend Summer, she was like, yeah, have you watched this thing on Netflix called The Secret? And I was like, The Secret? That sounds familiar. And she's like, yeah, it's a book. And I was like, oh, I have the book. And I really didn't like it because it seemed like it was like really not Jesus-y. And I want to like really wholeheartedly depend on Jesus and not my own self-help because I don't really believe in that. Um, to an extent. Okay. Summer was like, yeah, I watched The Secret on Netflix. It's like a little, like, movie show thing now. Not a show, it's a movie. Uh, so I was like, okay, I'll give it a shot. So I watched it. Mind blown. It, like, put into words all that I've been, like, thinking, but not actually quite being able to grasp about my thoughts and the power of positivity and not this so much, but like speaking things into existence. Like, and then I started doing a ton of research on how to put it into biblical format. So like God says, ask and you shall receive. If you uh, favor the Lord, then I'm not going to get this right. It was like first Corinthians something. I don't even know. Again, not an expert on this. Uh, Ask and you shall receive. Oh, if you favor the Lord, with, uh, then uh, your heart's desires will be met. Something along those lines. So I was like, okay. Like, like it says something along these lines in the Bible. And, like, maybe I'm just trying to chalk it up for my benefit. I don't know. But, like, being positive can't be something that can be malicious unless it's, like, hurting other people. I'm getting on a rant here. Anyway, so go on Netflix. Watch The Secret. And... You know, there's all kinds of books. There's like the power of now, the power of positivity, positive thinking. And I always thought, oh, that's nice for other people. But like I have a lot of crap going on in my life that like would warrant a ton of anxiety and would warrant a ton of like bad feelings and stuff. And like people have asked me if I want to be on medication. And I'm like, no, because it's not in my head. It's real life stuff that I'm going to have to work through, which there's nothing wrong with medication if you need it. It's just something that I'm not interested in doing right now. Start recognizing, I'm going to put this on silent, start recognizing your own thoughts and not just, you can't change something unless you understand it. The same thing goes for your thoughts. If you don't understand where your thoughts come from, then you're going to have a really hard time changing your thoughts because your thoughts become your feelings and your feelings become your reality. So that was really deep. That was some deep stuff. Get it while you can. Okay, last but not least, number three, and that is, if you fail to plan, you'll plan to fail, to an extent. Meal planning, sticking to a, like, direct, like, a, the same time exercise, knowing what you're going to do the night before, having your clothes picked out the night before, knowing that uh, this money is due for your kids field trip so you need to go ahead and write the check the night before because you know in the morning you go cray cray and she's not going to put like shorts on she's going to put pants on jeans specifically 
and you know it's going to be 80 degrees outside and then when you pick her up and she wore the jeans she's going to be mad at you because you didn't make her wear shorts even though it was like the game of thrones scene battle of you trying to get her to wear shorts because you told her it was going to be hot that was not specific to my life in any way Also, I don't really slurp my tea like that. I just thought it would be funny. Plan. Go ahead and plan. But also, don't freak out when things don't go to plan. If you forget your lunch and you have to go out to lunch, it's okay. If you uh, put on the outfit that you picked out and you look like a sack of potatoes, it's fine. Don't freaking wear it. If you're really bloated and you don't feel like wearing tight jeans, you feel like wearing leggings, but that's not what you had picked out, go for it, girl. Go for it. It's okay. It's just planning so that if you don't have the mental capacity to do it, like if you if you don't want to have decision fatigue, if you don't want to have to pack your lunch the next morning or you didn't have enough time or if you did accidentally oversleep, you are setting yourself up for success. So try to pick the same workout time every day. I know for me with Burn Boot Camp, it's Almost like I'm spoiled because I'm like, oh, if I miss the 5.30 in the morning, I'll just go to 6.30. Oh, miss the 6.30, gonna go to 7.30. Oh my God, miss the 7.30, I'll just go to noon. And then if I miss the noon class, like we're done for. Like unless I'm working there for like that night, there's no way I'm gonna get work out. <laughs> like today, I would have missed my workout today. Um, but I'm working there tonight, so it's all good. I'm gonna work out at 6.30. I pulled something in my neck and it's feeling a lot better. So I'm hoping that I can get back in there slowly, but I don't want to overdo it. Um, anyway, you, you need to do all these things. That's the T. That's the T Tuesday. Stop being mean to yourself. Recognize what your thoughts are and plan your ish out. That's what I'm going to try and do. This is mainly advice for myself to go back and watch so that I can like, you know, remember, why do I feel like? crap or overwhelmed oh yeah that's why so be nice to yourself girl i love you cheers